um, the yRNA virality family, uh, starting with the uh, double stranded uh, negative chains RNA virus, uh, and uh, the double stranded RNA, as I said, that there are uh, two families one is the yRNA virality, and uh, next one is this real VDD. So in uh, general virology, hopefully you can remember, uh, we generally ask about the DNA virus having single-stranded genome, then RNA virus with double-stranded genome, the positive and negative chains. These are the general type of question. What is what do you mean by eclipse phase, the uh, different stages of virus applications? So um, these are some of the questions that frequently we uh, ask and in the examination. So. Uh, the, after this by RNA variety, uh, next uh, one is this uh, Rio variety family. So under the by RNA variety, we discuss only one disease, uh, that is the infectious basal disease uh, of poultry. Uh, that's uh, uh, known to be an uh, immunosuppressive uh, disease, and because they basically target the pre-building sites and uh, they could immunosuppression occur. Okay, so. Um, uh, only that members under the Bionic Variety family, uh, we discussed all aspects about its diagnosis and different types, about the VV, IV, DV, very virulent uh, infectious basal disease virus, its uh, propagation, and uh, even the diagnostic and control that uh, we discussed it. So, in today's uh, sessions, we'll be uh, covering about the Rio Variety family. Okay, so this is another uh, member of a double-stranded RNA virus, double-stranded RNA virus noted down, and uh, they are segmented virus. This Rio variety, they are having uh, 10, 11, and some member even have 12 different segments. So example, okay. So uh, there are two segments, segment A and segment B. A is the smaller, B, larger uh, segment. Uh, however, in this Rio variety family, we have different members. Uh, the genomes uh, segments range from 10, and some species 11, somewhere it is 12. So these are the example of segmented RNA virus. So this uh, uh, Rio variety family, uh, the name has been given from uh, the initials of respiratory enteric and orphan. Respiratory enteric orphan virus. Uh, the meaning uh, is that the uh, first time when this group of viruses were isolated from human, uh, basically uh, it was isolated from respiratory tract and um, intestine, enteric um, passage. And most of the cases it is uh, without any disease. That's why it's called as the orphan. Orphan means uh, initial members were not uh, found to be any uh, pathogenic organism, but later on, it has been seen that there are certain very important pathogen uh, that uh, were included in this uh, Rio variety family. So the family name is because of the initials of a respiratory enteric orphan virus. Uh, the initials, if you see, R E O Rio Rio variety family. Okay, so uh, this. Uh, Rio variety, this include uh, two important subfamily, the Sado Rio virini and another the Spina Rio virini. These are all as for this uh, international community of taxonomy of viruses, which is shortly called as an ICT, is the uh, international agency which gives the uh, certification and maintenance of uh, the viruses. So, in classification, they categorize this uh, Rio variety into Seto and Spina. Spina, Rio virini means also Rio viruses having some uh, uh, or spine surface. They are non envelope viruses, but still, Spina, Rio virini, they possess some spine or, uh, or spines. Uh, and the Seto meaning is that smooth Seto. These uh, surfaces are, are smooth, it doesn't have in the projection, much projection. The uh, Sado Rio Virini subfamily include two important genus, Oli and Barota. We are going to discuss about only the highlighted uh, viral infection. Under this Orbi virus genus, uh, we are going to discuss about a uh, very important disease of SIP uh, uh, in India. It's the blue tongue 
virus infection or blue tongue disease and another uh, another uh, uh, fatal infection in horse it's again horse sickness virus as well it was detected in african continent but later on has been uh, disseminated throughout the globe even in our country also the disease has been detected uh, at a certain point of time earlier african horse sickness so these two infections we're going to discuss on the orb virus zinus so on the rotavirus we had a, a, a kind of an infection almost uh, uh, six different uh, genus is uh, there rota a b c d not six even eleven i guess yeah uh, rotavirus a b c d e uh, then f z h i z the different these are the uh, types of rotavirus so in general they causes a disease called as the rotaviral diarrhea so rotavirus are always associated with enteric infection and causes severe diarrhea in the neonatal stage okay the rotavirus is not a problem in adult animals um, but in the neonatal stage they can cause severe viral diarrhea so in the, um, uh, one of these uh, um, causes of uh, viral diarrhea in cattle and pig is the rotavirus diarrhea very common even in the human uh, the disease transmissions may occur and uh, the children also suffer from fatal rotaviral diarrhea acute diarrhea. so in under the spina uh, we we have the quality uh, orthodio and equa but uh, those are not included in the syllabi we are not going to discuss it so this is about the classification of the family mm. Yeah, this uh, we'll get it here. Uh, Any more want to join? Okay. Okay, fine. Mm. So, uh, the characteristics uh, about this entire family, the real variety family, uh, what we get first thing is that they are having the six so, Ten, uh, eleven, or twelve, like the rotaviruses are having eleven segment, and um, the Rio virus, so the Orbi virus is uh, sorry, not Rio, the Orbi virus, the blue tongue and African horse sickness virus is having uh, ten segment. Just some uh, members under the spina, in twelve segments are there. So we say that they are having segmented RNA virus having uh, runs between ten to twelve. Okay. So you can record it, uh, uh, rotavirus is having 11 segments and uh, um, virus is having 10 segments. So the other example is RNA uh, virus and they are of deep stains. So when we say they are negative stains, that means this group of virus must carry what? Uh, always we ask this particular question. So negative stains RNA virus must carry the RNA dependent RNA polymerase enzyme. So that enzyme it, it doesn't get it inside the host cell. So they have to carry and they have to carry the genetic information for this particular uh, protein RNA dependent RNA polymerase. So utilizing that, uh, the virus can call uh, uh, synthesis of messenger RNA from the virus. So around the two cases, the bigger genome size, having a lot of information, and they are the example of non-enveloped RNA viruses. Most of these RNA viruses you will find they are enveloped, but there are some which are non-enveloped. So this is uh, this uh, viruses like uh, the blue tongue, African horse sickness, and rotaviruses. They are the non-enveloped RNA viruses. There is a very interesting uh, things like in case of uh, this uh, Rio variety family they have more than one capsid layer. Please note it down, this is very important. More than one, most of the viruses are having only one layer of capsid that gives us an icosahedral or helical symmetry. But in case of the Rio variety family, they're having more than one layer of uh, capsids. Even three also, we can see concentric layers of the capsid protein. Basically, they are all icosahedral symmetry but uh, in uh, presence in three different layer so because of this uh, overlapping of this three layer under the electron microscopes uh, uh, the, the the viruses uh, are appearing in a different uh, fashion and because of which some special word we use it like the rotaviruses if you see it's, it look like uh, uh, spikes of an uh, wheel 
spokes of wheels. Uh, we can see this is a rotavirus. Uh, it's something like uh, the radiating spokes of a wheel, cart wheel appearance, or uh, somebody has described about this uh, cart wheel, where these are the radiating spike uh, spokes. And uh, because of which uh, the name has been given as the rota. Rota means uh, round or circular uh, cart wheel appearance. So similarly, mm, mm, this uh, Mm, uh, this uh, drop nut shape, a drop nut. These are the common uh, food item drop nuts, and uh, they 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 generally appear uh, <coughs> uh, on the surface of the RP viruses. These are some of the uh, computer stimulated simulated uh, modeling of the viral capsid layer on the basis of which uh, protein sequence and. Uh, in fact, this uh, appears just like this uh, cup-like uh, structures. We can see drop nut shape uh, structures on its surface. So that's the characteristics of uh, the RV viruses. So uh, these things can be seen under the electron microscopy yeah. as this is the rotavirus. And uh, we can see these are double capsid layer and the um, drop nut shape it, uh, structures on its surface. A few more, this is another rotaviruses uh, having this, uh, just like a cut wheel appearance. So please note it down the word cut wheel appearance, uh, uh, which is a specific terminology that we use it to describe the morphology of rotavirus. This is another schematic diagram here. You can see at the several layer, uh, although it looked like some sort of envelope, but this is not envelope. These are a capsid layer, one, two, three different layer. Uh, they are arranging um, the shape of the virus capsid layer. And at the inner core, the nucleuses remain uh, protected. And uh, they, they they are always associated with uh, the viral protein one, uh, as well as the streets having this uh, RNA dependent RNA polymerase activity. So rest are uh, uh, some of the structural proteins uh, which give rise to the spikes uh, and uh, uh, the different inner capsid layer. So uh, this VP4 is an important uh, surface uh, uh, proteins which help in resting the virus on the surface of the cell for initiate its replication. Uh, if you see, uh, take an example about the rotaviruses uh, infecting your cells, then you'll find the virus entire replication that takes place in the cytoplasm of the infected host cells, typical of the RNA viruses. So through their surface spikes, they can land on the surface and through endosomes and encapsidations and the negative acid get released. So since they are the um, negative sense RNA viruses, so utilizing their RNA dependent RNA polymerase, the virus uh, uh, synthesis, I mean, transcriptions and translations occur. New virus particles, again, they form inside this uh, cytoplasm and finally they release. And, the release process always they cause a slices of the cell because of which uh, in this group of virus infection uh, the cell lysis occur i mean uh, heavy cellular damage occur and the cytoplasmic membrane get uh, ruptured and because of which uh, we could see some uh, devastating clinical manifestation okay so that's about this uh, replications of uh, uh, this group of viruses and the general characteristics. A few more important uh, factors like uh, they are having some uh, pH tolerance means uh, particularly the orthodio and the rotaviruses are stable even in the pH tree. So very well can pass through the gastric mucosa. So uh, through oral loop, the virus can easily pass through to the intestine and uh, they can uh, have their uh, actions and activities, okay? However, this, uh, most of the RB viruses like the blue tongue and African horse sickness, they uh, are stable at the narrow pH range, okay? Now, obviously, they'll be resistant to the lipid solvent. Why? If I ask you why this uh, resistant to the lipid solvent, because they are the example of non-envelope virus okay envelope virus are susceptible to the lipid solvent because this uh, envelope is a phospholipid in nature and the lipid solvent can easily uh, destroy that's why we are using this hand sanitizer as alcohol based hand sanitizer uh, which act as a lipid solvent against this um, SARS-2 virus infection 
Then another important fact, uh, which are again related to the uh, pathogenesis of uh, rotaviruses and few members of orbiviruses, uh, the proteolytic uh, cleavage of the surface proteins is essential to uh, establish infection. So particularly the chymotrypsin is very specific for the rotaviruses. So uh, the animal which is having a very high level of chymotrypsin in its uh, intestinal wall are uh, uh, more susceptible than the animal having the less amount of chymotrypsin, particularly the suckling animals who depend on the mother's milk. They have a lot of enzyme activity in their uh, uh, small intestine. And that is why the more cleavage of virus takes place and the viruses causes a severe infection in the uh, early stage of uh, life, uh, in the young, on the piglets, or in the young, first week of life, uh, the cops, even the goat may suffer from this kind of uh, rotoviral uh, infection. Then uh, going ahead to some more feature on how this uh, virus can be propagated, you'll find uh, uh, some members are adapted to the embryonic chicken egg, like the orbiviruses, blue tongue virus, we can grow by inoculating the embryonic chicken egg by uh, cam root or even by intravenous root of inoculations, uh, we can grow the virus in the embryonic uh, chicken egg. Like uh, blue tongue virus, it's a seed virus, but can be propagated in the uh, chicken egg. So um, likewise, some uh, variations we could see and these kind of systems are available for uh, virus propagations and diagnosis purpose, okay? Besides this, we're having a lot of specific cell line available for growing the viruses and uh, viruses, they grow in the cytoplasm of the infected host cell and cellular disruptions occur. And uh, sometimes they form uh, the inclusions uh, which are diagnostically important. So these are some of the general characteristics of uh, the Rio virus family. Now we will uh, go on, uh, individually to, um, okay. Yeah, individual diseases like uh, we'll start with the blue tongue disease. The name itself indicates blue tongue means the tongue uh, appears as a cyanotic or bluish appearance of the tongue that occur in this uh, viral infections. And um, it's uh, sometimes the severe infections leads to 30% mortality, up to 30% the sick mortality may occur. Although it's occur in the cattle and uh, goat, but uh, more susceptible species is the sheep. So, in uh, this disease was uh, in 1881, it was uh, described the first incidence uh, uh, as an caterhal inflammation. So, um, this is a characteristic feature. It's an acute uh, caterhal uh, uh, inflammation of so the mucous membrane, so buccal mucosa and gastrointestinal tract of uh, sheep. And most of the time, the acute infections are transmitted by uh, arthropods. Some arthropod vectors are associated, which act as a biological vector. This is an interesting uh, thing. Even in case of African swine fever virus, uh, we are having a biological vector, ornithodorus T. The, the meaning of mechanical vector and biological vector, uh, hope that you understand, but still uh, for your reprisal, I'm telling you, uh, the mechanical vectors are uh, the species of insect which uh, uh, mechanically transmit the virus infection from one animal to the other. Uh, then that means uh, simply sucking the blood, they will suck out the virus also along with the blood. And when they will feed in another animal, they will push it and the virus transmission will occur. So no virus replications will take place within the arthropod vector. We call it as a mechanical vector. But when we say it's a biological vector, that indicates that once the insect suck the blood, then uh, the virus goes to the silom or the body cavity of the insect. The virus will replicate inside from few number to thousands of virus will produce. And it's become a normal virus uh, of the insect. Insect will never die because of that infection. And um, a lot of um, virus amplifications will occur. And uh, even like, the biological vector uh, on insect can pass the virus to the next generation for the nymphal stage to the next uh, progeny generation and 
in a uh, uh, geographical area, the insect can harbor indefinitely the virus uh, uh, within their population. And accidentally, when this uh, uh, insect uh, uh, access to the animal for blood sucking, then the disease transmission occurs. So the diseases where um, uh, biological vectors are available, it's uh, extremely difficult to control the uh, disease. So same things happen with the blue tongue infection. So it's an uh, acute atropod-borne viral disease, uh, primarily of sheep, but also seen in the cattle and goat. Uh, and uh, mainly it is characterized by cattle health inflammations. Cattle are produced in the eyes and the uh, mucous membrane. Similar to that of the PPA, probably have studied the, um, uh, the paramyxis severity family uh, in the pathology. So we are going to discuss about that cattle health inflammation also, PPA. So the, this is, is very much prevalent. Uh, in our country. And then, uh, interestingly, the virus is having several uh, serotypes. So the blue tongue virus under the genus Orbivirus family Rio Verity, and having the tan segments, uh, those standard RNA genome. And uh, the virus is having, uh, it's mentioned 26 serotypes, but uh, recently another three serotypes were identified, it's become 29. Uh, recent inf information is the 29 serotype. Even uh, if you refer to some textbook, you will get around 16 or 21 serotype. as because uh, newer and newer serotypes are appearing into the populations and they are going recording to the textbook uh, gradually. So um, probably this 26 figure is uh, three years back. Now we know there are 29 different serotypes uh, of mutant virus uh, circulating um, uh, globally. So out of that, 21 serotypes has been detected in India. And again, out of that 21 different serotypes, a uh, few serotypes like 12, 10, 16, 23s are um, very much prevalent. In most of the outbreak, we could see these uh, serotypes, okay? So that's about these uh, antigenic types of uh, uh, the blue tongue virus. Now, um, uh, as already we mentioned that uh, both embryonic and chicken egg, we can grow the virus by intravenous root of inoculation as well as cam root. Uh, so at the same time, so, uh, certain cell line like baby hamster kidney 21, VHK 21, then Vero, Vero means African green monkey kidney cell line. These are immortal cell line, as I said, cell line. These are um, indefinitely growing cells. Um, they're not normal cells. Then MDBK, like made in derby, canine kidney. Mm, then HeLa, Henrietta Lex, it's a human cell line. So this can be used for propagation of uh, the blue tongue uh, virus in the laboratory. And when they grow in this, uh, either in the embryo and the chicken, it, it causes severe hemorrhage on the surface of the embryo and the embryo die. Usually um, 13 to 14 days old embryo, we go for this kind of inoculations and the embryo, they produce severe hemorrhages on its surface, okay? Similarly, when you grow this uh, virus in the um, cell line, they causes uh, uh, destruction of cell, cell lysis uh, takes place. Coming to the host, where you will get the disease, the blue tongue virus infection. So basically, these are diseases of sheep are the most susceptible uh, animals. Uh, however, uh, uh, occasionally, sometimes uh, goat, cattle, and wild ruminants, particularly deer, the disease has also been recorded. So no other species you will see the incidence of the virus infection. So um, now coming to the uh, transmissions, like uh, where the virus will uh, remain in the environment, you'll find uh, beside the infected host, uh, like uh, the sheep, infected sheep, uh, they may harbor the virus and can say it, even the male sheep uh, ram, they can uh, shed the virus through uh, semen. But uh, the most important uh, way of disease transmission is through the biological factor. It's a mites, mites, culicoides, mites. Please note it down. Culicoides, mites. Mites, uh, this is in, in the insect. I have given a picture of culicoides, imicolite uh, mites. Uh, uh, instead of this species, rather, uh, you can write it culicoides. There are 17 different species where identified which harbor this uh, virus as a biological 
factor. So on the, in, the, in, the, in the certain geographical area, uh, this mines populations divide up within that population, and when they uh, suck blood, uh, then uh, the disease transmissions occur. So this is a very important mode of uh, blue tongue virus infection. So obviously, one of the major to control the blue tongue disease is by controlling the mines. Okay, by using some acaricide, we can. Uh, get rid of this mites population and that will help us in uh, preventing the disease okay so uh, usually the mites population and the number increases in the summer months so we could see in the uh, rainy summer months the incidence more okay uh, although uh, this mites are responsible for most of the acute uh, infection but all uh, some other experiment also revealed that uh, and the dust and the feed and water, as well as through semen, the disease literally may transmit among sheep to sheep. Now, what basically happened, the pathogenesis, how the virus will uh, go inside the body and produce the disease. If you see this um, flow circuit, and you'll understand, once it will be entered, either insect will push it uh, to the blood circulation directly. Uh, in that case, the uh, the virus will be uh, trapped by these uh, macrophages and uh, uh, neutrophils and we carry to the um, uh, regional lymph nodes where they will grow and multiply. More amount of virus will come to the primary viremia. Then they mainly affect the spleen, bone marrow and uh, the lymph nodes. So from here, the virus will sour in uh, uh, millions and that's what we call a secondary viremia. At the stage of secondary viremia, you'll find that will cause endothelial cell lining damage. The blood vessel uh, endothelial lining get damaged because of active uh, virus infections and lysis of cell. At the same time, even the uh, immune um, death, uh, cell lysis also takes place. I can explain the consequences. If the endothelial uh, cells of the blood vessels uh, will get damaged, so obviously there will be leakage of uh, blood uh, what we call as the humerase and um, in the tissues and then edematous swelling will occur because the body uh, blood fluid uh, uh, will come out of the blood vessels and uh, we can see a cyanotic area which is very very prominent in the tongue of the infected uh, uh, sheep that's why the disease is called as the blue tongue infection. Uh, but it doesn't mean that only the tongue, it happens in the different parts of the body where the edematous swellings uh, will develop. It's more prominent in the tongue, that's why it is called as the blue tongue infection, right? So it's uh, the cyanosis of the tongue, the um, animal unable to eat and um, drink or anything. And, uh, in severe cases, uh, mortality we can see up to 30 percent. But at the same time, uh, the viruses, since they are endotheliotropic, so uh, in a pregnant use, the embryo may die inside this uh, uterus. And uh, at the later part of pregnancy, if the infections occur, then uh, we can see some sort of uh, malformations, um, what we call the teratogenic effects will produce because of the virus infections like hydroencephalitis, uh, uh, the big head conditions and water accumulation in the cephalus and then um, uh, some of the um, uh, mispositions uh, uh, and appropriations of uh, the body structures, malformations may occur. So um, the birth related issues so we can see if uh, the virus infection takes place during the pregnancy period. Right? So as I said earlier, like uh, the males can uh, pass it through the semen and become a mode of uh, transmissions to other uh, animals. So some of the clinical uh, signs and symptoms has been uh, uh, described it here. Uh, we may immediately try to see some uh, slides where we can understand. Initially, you can see some sort of nasal ditchers and edematous swellings in the nasal cavity and uh, catar how uh, uh, exudates you'll find. Uh, and then coronary uh, band in the coronary, just above the hoof also, uh, hot, uh, painful swelling that occur because of endothelial damage. And uh, the animal sometimes will pain 
things and cannot uh, stand uh, for long periods and some sort of arc back uh, conditions we can see. Uh, these are some of the photographs taken and uh, the retrieved, uh, retrieved uh, tongue. You can see the cyanosis and edimeter swelling. Uh, when this kind of lesions are produced, definitely animals will be unable to eat and drink and uh, the body conditions uh, deteriorates uh, very rapidly. And uh, uh, many cases, the animal may die. So some sort of uh, arc back conditions we can see because uh, of painful swelling in the feet and uh, viral uh, infection as it progresses. So um, these are some of the uh, things that uh, we could see. Um, Uh, in this uh, blue tongue infections. Now coming to the diagnosis, uh, how best we can confirm it? Uh, because we know there are some other infections where the animal may show this kind of uh, uh, salivation and nasal ditchers. So uh, accurately uh, diagnosis of the disease, we have to depend on the laboratory test. So always it starts with the clinical signs and symptom typical about the disease and then uh, for laboratory confirmations, we can take anti-mortem and the post-mortem samples as has been shown it here. So obviously blood will be as where uh, we can detect the virus as well as the virus specific antibodies. So some of the tests uh, which already has been discussed with you, AZPT, CFT, ELISA, FAT, again I'm uh, stressing this word FAT, towards an antibody test. As I say, for all virus disease diagnosis, so we perform this FAT and it's a standard test we can see. Similarly, the antibody detection, so we can go for the ELISA and a test called as virus neutralization test, VNT. This is a most appropriate test. However, it, uh, it's required a cell cell laboratory to perform the virus neutralization test. So the uh, neutralizing antibody present in the blood can be detected by performing virus neutralized uh, and uh, particularly in, uh, after vaccinations, we can check whether the animals are protected or not by performing this virus neutralization test, okay? Now, coming to the isolation, and this is another integral part of uh, microbial uh, disease diagnosis. So, uh, as I said, uh, we can go for embryonic chicken egg as well as the cell culture. So, these are some embryonic chicken egg intravenous, uh, if you just uh, uh, reflect the skin, uh, sorry, this uh, egg cells uh, superficially, then we can see some major blood vessels on the line. And very carefully, of course, this is a very skilled uh, techniques. We can give the intravenous injections and uh, of course, we can go for the cam root of inoculation also. You can see this kind of hemorrhages, entire body, the, the, the embryo will die and they will be hemorrhagic. Then the cell cells are this way the cells disintegration takes place. This side is the normal cells and here it is the infected cells within say three to four days of infection cells uh, disintegrations will take place. So thereby we can uh, uh, go for uh, the diagnosis of the uh, disease. Earlier uh, there are certain uh, laboratory animal models like uh, the mice models were also um, developed for diagnosis. Pop predictions will go, give rise to pulses and death in the mice. But nowadays, these are not uh, performed because we had alternative good taste for detection. Okay. And uh, of course, the molecular methods uh, and in-situ habitation taste and PCR methods uh, become very easy and uh, very rapid and accurately we can detect and even we can characterize the serotypes by PCR and sequencing. So uh, these are the way how we can go for uh, diagnosis of uh, the blue tongue infection. Now coming to the controls. So um, although uh, till now we don't have any live attenuated strain vaccines for controlling the infections, but uh, on an approach globally, people has uh, taken that's the multivalent inactivated vaccine approach, uh, which is very common throughout the globe. And since several serotypes are there, almost 29 serotypes and six serotypes, as we could see in India, so the most common serotypes were uh, grown and uh, inactivated. Remember, these are uh, in India, we go for the inactivated vaccine. 
So we kill the virus and we mix up with suitable adjuvant so that the immunity will be proper and are injected to the sheep. And thereby, uh, we can reduce the uh, number of outbreaks and we can give protections to the uh, sheep. However, as I said, that um, the virus also maintain uh, by insect vector in the populations in environment. So sometimes it is difficult to uh, give protection in endemic area where the disease very regularly occur. Only ways to we have to go for frequent boostering and so that the protective antibody titer uh, remain in the blood uh, throughout the year. More particularly, we target the before pre-monsoon seasons we vaccinate so that during the monsoon the antibody titer will be uh, sufficiently present in the animal. Okay, so vector control obviously it will be an approach um, as um, uh, we can control this uh, uh, mites populations then uh, the animals will be uh, more or less to safe from the attack virus. Okay, so um, India is uh, selling a lot of vaccines to African countries and other uh, South Asian countries and we are earning a lot of money out of that then Mm, the, the, the the vaccines which are very common in India is the Raksa Blue, Indian immunologicals, they prepare it, uh, containing zero type 1, 2, 10, 16, 23, and these are the inactivated, these five zero types were grown equally and are inactivated or killed, what we say, and then are mixed up with the suitable uh, adjuvant. So one of the low cost uh, good adjuvant is the aluminum hydroxide. Another is saponin. Saponins are a little bit costly. Uh, so mm, this way, uh, uh, in the endemic uh, uh, areas in India, regularly this is a uh, vaccination practice carried out uh, to the uh, sheep. Uh, of course, in Northeast India, we we, we have uh, encountered the uh, incidence of this blue tongue infections. However, in uh, Central and the South India, the incidence are very very high. Now uh, we'll shift to the second uh, important member on the um, uh, this orbivirus, it's uh, the African horse sickness. So uh, this is exclusively a disease uh, that uh, we could see in the horse, mule, donkey, zebras, all these solid pets animal. However, accidental uh, incidents were seen in elephant and dog, but they are not regular host. Okay, so this is basically occurring the uh, um, solid pet uh, animals, and here also on an arthropod plays an important role in uh, uh, transmitting the disease. The virus uh, in the environment. Okay, so in, in a very shortly, if you want to describe African heart sickness, you'll find it causes uh, acute or subacute. Subacute means before developing any symptoms, the animal may die. Uh, acute or subacute febrile high fevers are produced and characterized by hemolysis in the internal organ. So here also, the, basically, the pathology is almost the same. We'll find the endothelial damage will lead to uh, a, a escape of body fluids, blood fluids to the tissues and uh, what we call the edematous swelling. So edematous swellings are seen and the edematous swellings in the uh, respiratory tracts are so severe that uh, acute pneumonia and uh, the curtain and this uh, respiratory forms on the animals uh, so large scale mortality so basically it's uh, uh, first undefined of uh, african continent but uh, later on uh, spread it to all the uh, uh, middle east countries including the indian subcontinent and uh, to european countries so this particular virus is having nine serotypes and uh, these serotypes are not protecting each other so multivalent vaccines approach is there in uh, controlling African horse sickness infection also. So this virus under uh, the genus Orbivirus having the 10 segment, example of uh, double-stranded RNA virus having segmented genome. Uh, okay, these are some of the Y uh, disease map. 
Uh, why I'm showing it uh, not to much explain about the uh, prevalence, but uh, at any point, if you want to know about the disease prevalence uh, globally of certain diseases, that uh, you can go to this OIE website, the World Organization of Animal Health, OIE, and uh, you can search the uh, disease map and uh, get a regularly days to update it, and you can get an uh, ready idea about the where the disease is prevalent globally. Okay. Now coming to the spreads, as I said that uh, the chilicoid is uh, biological vector mites uh, take an important role uh, in maintaining the virus in the environment and uh, most of the killed infections are because of infestations by this mite species, infected mites, okay. And uh, beside these, uh, there are uh, some incidents where the mechanical transmissions uh, or lateral transmission has been seen uh from uh yeah, this animals okay so if you go to the pathogenesis they're exactly the same kind of things you'll find uh, it's because the lymph nodes and transient viremia again the virus will become a secondary variant where uh, it will cause widespread vasculitis ultimate is the widespread vasculitis the damage of the vascular endothelial cells uh, will lead to hemorrhages and edematous swelling throughout the body okay it's a very uh, generalized kind of infections highly severe infection so uh, four different uh, clinical forms were described uh, please note it down some uh, sometimes i've seen in some external examination people is to say the question dunkop and decop these are some uh, african uh, language i don't understand about it dunkop and decop but it says the pulmonary or acute form is called as the dunkop and cardiac uh, is called as the decop okay so uh, another is the missed form and the mild form. Here the cardiac form, uh, the 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 the, the uh, hemorrhages that occur in the uh, endocardium will give rise to uh, uh, this heart failure conditions in horse. Okay? So this is in uh, pictures of these flies and how it can be transmitted and um, even the gibras and. Um, as I said, it's a biological vector after sucking the blood and uh, pick up the virus by this insect, they will harbor it and amplify it uh, outside the host. And when they infest another host, then the virus will be injected. So this is a true uh, representation of a uh, biological vector. Okay. So, uh, the pulmonary forms were uh, is the most common form seen uh, uh, in the endemic area. So where the mortality may reach up to 95 percent. So this um, in the large animals, the mortality up to almost it says 100 percent mortality is always considered to be a highly fatal and uh, disease having severe economic uh, impact. So uh, the areas where the disease is prevalent is really uh, alarming and we should consider it very seriously. Large animal, 95% uh, mortality is a uh, very serious matter. So, um, some sort of uh, clinical forms in the pulmonary, uh, the, 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 um, the froth, they appear to the nostrils. Uh, uh, we can see it, uh, something like uh, literally recumbency, the animal will die and the whole respiratory passes, the frothy exudates will be there. And one of the signs is that this uh, supraorbital uh, edema, usually the supraorbital uh, space uh, uh, remain in a uh, depressed uh, appearance in normal horse. So a lot of fluid accumulation in the supraorbital uh, spaces leads to edema, the swelling. It is a sign of African horse sickness. From distant places, uh, the sick animals, uh, they saw this kind of uh, uh, supraorbital edema, bilateral supraorbital edema, then we can suspect about this uh, African horse sickness uh, in the animal. Okay, usually it doesn't happen. This is uh, usually remain in depressed condition, but here it is an acute swelling. You can see uh, this indicate a lot of uh, water accumulation takes place in the uh, supraorbital uh, space. Okay, so edema, the swellings at the post mortem, you can see practical hemorrhages and some gelatinous fluid. This is a true signs of edematous uh, edema formation inside the body. 
So damages occur in all internal organs and uh, blood vessel damage will lead to uh, high mortality in horses. Okay. So here again, the story of uh, diagnosis is always start with the clinical signs and symptoms about the edema, swelling of supraorbital fossa and then nasal froth appearance and uh, respiratory and uh, uh, cardiac manifestation of the disease are important. Uh, for laboratory confirmation, no doubt we need to collect this uh, both anti mortem and the post mortem samples. And some of the recommended tests is uh, the ELISA and Azazel precipitation test. Similarly, CFT and VNP for antibody detections, which are regularly performed in the diagnostic laboratory. Then for isolations, we generally select the BHK20 on the various cells where uh, the virus infections. Uh, um, uh, will take uh, several passages, means uh, simply giving a virus infection, uh, you may not see the uh, changes or the therapeutic effect. So maybe we have to go for uh, two, three passages or uh, several passages, only then the therapeutic effect will be more prominent. This has happened with the rotaviruses also. In the single incidence, the virus may not show the therapeutic effect. No doubt they will grow, but the cellular changes are more prominent after several passes. Passes means from one flux to the next flux to the next to the next. So it takes some time uh, for developing this kind of changes. So alternative tests like the RT-PCR, we can perform it uh, for rapid detections. And in the uh, mice model, um, uh, we can use it for reproduction, the disease, uh, for disease diagnosis. So, however, we don't have any uh, chicken embryo system for propagating this virus as they and do not propagate in this system. Right? So, it's, it's exactly similar to that of the blue tongue infections. Um, here also, uh, we, we use uh, uh, multivalent vaccine approves, and in some countries they are having this modified live virus vaccines. In our country, we don't go for any vaccinations as such uh, the disease prevalence uh, are not very common, uh, but uh, sporadically it happened earlier. And second is the arthropod control. So the idea um, where the disease is endemic, it is considered to be an highest priority area of African horse sickness. So. Uh, people definitely relax here about this kind of diseases, the most uh, uh, impactful viral infections in the point. This is one African heart sickness. So in the international market, some uh, uh, this kind of uh, vaccines are available, alternative strain. Then we'll uh, shift it to the third infection, the rotavirus infection. So as I said, that uh, uh, this rota, the meaning of rota, rota means wheel. And uh, uh, this uh, virus having this uh, double capsid layer, and because of this overlapping capsids uh, under electron microscopes, it looks like uh, some radiating uh, wheels, uh, just like the wheel appearance, cart wheel appearance, we call it as a rotavirus infection. So it's having a wide variety of uh, animals It causes <coughs> diarrhea and uh, um, the common cause of mortality particularly the first week of life remember the as the animal is uh, increases their uh, susceptibility to the rotavirus decreases so in adult absolutely rotavirus is not an issue no infections occur in the adult however adult uh, animals like the uh, sows or uh, boars may harbor the virus in their intestine as a normal uh, uh, common cells However, the viruses are uh, uh, very much susceptible age group is the first week of life. So um, this uh, rotavirus is, uh, has been seen in many animal species and uh, uh, one of the characteristics 11 segment, segmented genome. And as I mentioned earlier, like uh, the cleavage of the surface protein by chymotrypsins and the trypsins is essential for infectivity. That's why, you know, like in uh, suckling animals, the trypsin uh, enzyme concentration is very high in their small intestines. So, uh, through contaminated food and water, when the uh, viruses crosses the intestinal mucosa, why it can cross the intestinal or the stomach? Because there stable appears between three to nine. So they can well withstand the uh, acidic pH in the stomach and can cross and 
reach to the intestine through oral route. And the intestine strips can uh, activate the surface uh, spikes, proteins, and that help in establishment of infection to the enterocyte. So we'll come to that point in the uh, coming slides. So uh, the antigenic structures, as I said, that uh, can recognize group. Uh, these things are like uh, not a very rigid one. Today you see 10, but after a few days again, you may find one, two more, maybe 12. It's, it's very common among these uh, the segmented RNA virus. If I ask you why it is so, the simple answer will be the genetic reassortment. As we talk with the influenza viruses, the genetic reassortment is a phenomenon where uh, two uh, related uh, um, segmented RNA virus, when they infect the same cells, then exchange of uh, genetic segment takes place. And this kind of exchange uh, keeps the probability of emergence of new uh, serotypes into the population. So, uh, 10 different recognized groups has been identified. And uh, the group A are uh, quite important for men and animals. And most of the times, this group A they uh, associated with the uh, disease condition. However, um, some uh, group differences are there, B, C, and D, particularly H group recently identified in the human as well as in the pig. Uh, group D, uh, rotavirus is uh, as detected in animals. Likewise, uh, group E is more specific for pigs. So these groups are the serial groups. So they are having some serological variants among these uh, rotaviruses, and as such, they are giving the uh, grouping. Okay. So um, in general, um, uh, all the rotaviruses are grouped as a G group and P group, depending on their uh, presence of the surface uh, um, proteins. So 32 G groups and uh, 47 P group of viruses were identified till now. I uh, will not go much details about all this grouping, just uh, to uh, make you understand about the structure of the virus. Uh, we can go through this picture. So uh, coming to the, um, the host, as I say, that the host means uh, it occurs in all neonatal animals like rotavirus we see in the uh, calf, uh, pigs, and poultry. So, in all animal species, we could see this uh, rotavirus infection. So, neonatal states, particularly the one week of life, they are highly susceptible to this infection. Okay. And um, the disease transmission, if you see, it is only by the oral route. No other means the rotavirus transmission occurs. Basically, what happened, the mother or the um, uh, sows or the um, harboring the virus in their intestine. As I said, the adult, they normally harbor the virus in their intestines and passes the virus through feces to the environment. And when this, um, the floors will not be clean, or if it is mixed up with the food the stuff, or water stuff, then the newborn animals may get access. Pigs particularly, because of their scavenging nature, they will get access to the feces and then they may consume it. So once they will consume, as I say that uh, the virus get activated in presence of the trypsins in the intestine, uh, <coughs> they will, uh, sorry, get attached to the enterocyte, particularly the uh, villas where the uh, exchange of nutrients uh, takes place. And uh, the, the, the cells uh, of the intestinal epithelium, which are responsible for digestions of milk and uh, milk uh, sewers and the proteins. So those cells will be targeted and the uh, uh, cell lysis will occur. Gradually, the cells will die and the, the length of the villi will get shortened. And because of this uh, uh, degenerative changes occur because of the virus infection, the, uh, the animal will suffer from indigestions and uh, low absorptions of, uh, of fluid and nutrients uh, and more efflux of water from the uh, blood to the intestinal lumen will occur across the membrane and that will give rise to diarrhea. So, uh, this virus uh, basically doesn't uh, absorb to the uh, blood circulation and doesn't go inside the body and doesn't circulate. It's mainly localizing the 
intestinal epithelium and entire circling of the virus that takes place within that uh, intestinal epithelium. But uh, the death basically occur because of severe dehydration uh, because of uh, diarrhea. The animal they die. Okay, so some of the lesions you can see this is a uh, uh, villus. Uh, sorry, it's in crypt, crypt area. A lot of virus particles. These are all black spots are under the electron microscopes. Look like these are the viruses. So uh, millions of virus particles they can uh, accumulate it. You see, these are some of the normal villi, but this particular villi get disintegrated here. These are the villus disintegration process going on in the rotoviral diarrhea cases. So the conditions or the terms we said that a villus atrophy, the villi length will get shortened and they will lose their normal functions in the intestine because of the virus infection. So as a result, the animals um, will develop severe diarrhea and there will be poor growth uh, at this stage. Of course, if the animals survive, the growth and um, nutrients will be very less absorbed to the body and uh, will not get the uh, proper productions in the uh, food animals. So um, that's about this rotoviral uh, diarrhea. Coming to the diagnosis, um, the risk things as we discussed in the previous chapters, you can find it out the same clinical signs and symptoms. And, but what I'll be focusing here to a uh, specific case, you can note it down, it's a little bit laborious, but still this has been practiced a long time in the laboratory. It's called as the RNA page, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. And uh, this is, an you know, now the page is a test performed to separate the proteins uh, as well as the nucleic acids. So here the RNA page uh, is performed to separate the distinct uh, tan segment of the virus. And it has been seen that whatever the groups we have mentioned in tan different uh, groups, uh, group A, group B, group C, the, the electrophoretic pattern of the RNA segments are different. And uh, looking at it, we can identify the difference among the groups as it's called as the RNA page. So we may have, yeah, this is a picture of RNA page where you can see these two viruses having the similar pattern, but here it is another segment is coming. So likewise, the different groups, they're having different electrophoretic pattern in the RNA page. So please note it down, RNA page is a specific test to detect the uh, RNA segments of rotavirus infection, particularly in the rotavirus we perform it. But uh, nowadays we are having more uh, quick tests uh, for rapid detections like um, the latex agglutination test, of course, is not mentioned it here. Um, then uh, some literal flow assay uh, based on the ELISA, uh, the, just like the rapid antigen test we are performing these days, the same kind of tests are also available for rotavirus detection. And in the laboratory, FAT and counter-immunoelectrophoresis can be performed CIEP for uh, easy detection of so the virus in the laboratory. Then again, we can talk about these uh, isolations where specific uh, <coughs> viral cells, we can use it. MA104 monkey kidney cells are specifically used for isolation of rotavirus. But remember, uh, before giving the infection to the cell culture, we used to treat the samples with uh, some enzymes like trypsin so that uh, the infectivity increases. So several passes is needed to develop a therapeutic effect. So the quick and rapid test with the RT-PCR test, uh, we can target some specific uh, um, uh, structural protein for rapid detection of the virus by genetic test, okay, by gene amplification. So that's about the diagnosis. Now coming to the control, prevention and control. No doubt in human, we had a very good kind of vaccines available and most of our children stays to get this type of <coughs> vaccines. But in animal, uh, we need some uh, uh, specific types of uh, vaccines. So uh, some uh, attenuated vaccines are mainly targeted to the uh, pregnant animals, as an, uh, and we mainly target the passive immunity. So this is a very important feature. Please uh, uh, note it down. Since the disease, the rotavirus disease, is basically occur in uh, uh, the, the first week of life, 
the young animals, the first week of life. So uh, rarely we can give some uh, vaccines and uh, can produce any active immunity. You know, the development of immunity itself take one week or two week time. So uh, it is very difficult to uh, develop any active immunity in the young animals to get uh, vaccinated and protected against the disease. Rather, we target the sows or the mothers. So during the pregnancy period, we can give the vaccines to the mothers so that they will excrete large amount of antibodies, uh, very specific antibodies through colostrum. And the first week of life, when the uh, animals will uh, take those colostrum, uh, their intestines, they will have these uh, antibodies to neutralize the virus. So that's a passive immunity. Uh, we can target it for uh, giving protection. That's an important uh, uh, part of rotavirus control. Please remember. Then uh, the regular disinfections, the floors uh, with uh, agents are uh, important. And this is a lateral flow test. This type of uh, um, rapid uh, detection kits are available for uh, detection of rotaviruses. And, uh, <clears throat> available in the international market, uh, in case of the human uh, in, uh, in our country, also available. However, in animal, mostly we have some sort of latex agglutination test. So uh, that's all about this rheovirality family and this three important disease like uh, blue tongue, then uh, uh, African horse sickness and rotavirus uh, we have included into this session. Yes. Thank you very much. This is uh, this much is for today. Uh, do you have any specific question? Yes. Do you have any specific question? Hello, please respond. Yes. Do you have any specific question? Please note it down and uh, let me know uh, so that I can address in the next class. I, I did not encounter any questions of uh, the bioanivality family. Hope that these things already you have studied in some uh, pathology and some of the courses. Definitely it will be helpful for you to understand it.